We will right this ship. Local leaders are steadfast that they will not lose the USS The Sullivans, but the stunning scene shows that it is not going to be an easy task. Good evening, everyone. I'm Scott Levin. Mary Alice is off tonight. The nearly 80-year-old destroyer has spent 45 of those years welcoming guests at the Buffalo waterfront. And even after it started showing serious signs of aging last year, the sudden turn for the worse overnight was a real shock for so many people who have visited over those decades. We have live team coverage down at the Naval Park for you tonight. Between the sides, Ron Plants starts things off for us tonight with questions about how this happened. Ron, good evening. Good evening, Scott. Obviously, this is very difficult to look at with this ship in the background with that still severe angle of list for this ship. Uh, obviously, all the pride in this community with these ships through the years. Now there is this complicated rescue operation underway, and photojournalist JT Messenger is going to kind of go in tighter on the pumps there, massive pumps that they're using to try to get some of the water off the ship. Also, an investigation, as you pointed, underway to try to determine exactly what went wrong this morning. Even the weather may be partially to blame. Gray skies matching the mood of many as they saw this proud gray veteran of World War II, the USS The Sullivans, actually listing to the side at its mooring. Now a coordinated effort between Bidco Salvage, Buffalo Fire and Public Works, and the Coast Guard standing by to try to rescue the ship, which is partially sunk into the river bottom, with the possibility of a hole in that very thin 3 8 of an inch steel hull near the starboard or right side of the ship's stern or the back of the ship. We have some incident that happened below the water line. We just don't know what is the cause at this point. And we have investigations from the Bidco divers that will hopefully determine what they, the cause is so we can get through the repairs. Now the effort to get out as much of that heavy water as possible with massive pumps brought in to save the ship. The danger is that the list gets too extreme and it might roll over. Roll over. You know, that's... Uh, hard to even imagine, but it is a dramatic list and it has gone more since we've been here. We were here at nine o'clock. They were here, they were alerted to it at midnight. Marzello theorizes the shifting winds of past days caused a reverse sage effect on the lake with water shifting back towards the west and the lower water here perhaps starting that listing problem. Ironically, hull repairs had begun last summer after a major community fundraising effort brought in a million dollars. We did a study two and a half years ago in which we did a, a, a full analysis of the hull and realized that she had some very thin areas that we needed to address. So Bidco started the work last summer. At the end of last summer, they were pulled off the job once the water temperature dropped below 54 degrees because that was the magic number that the epoxy was needed to adhere to the steel. They were supposed to start Monday, as a matter of fact, so it was just a matter of poor timing on our part that we had this whole bridge because they were starting to mobilize their barges in place. I got to tell you, when we first approached Paul Marzello, the, uh, who was the president and CEO of a military park here, he was extremely emotional this morning because they've worked so hard to try to save this ship. Uh, he called this a severely depressing situation for all the staff here at the museum and all the supporters, everybody who's worked to save this ship. Um, now, you heard him also say he's going to do everything they can to save this ship. Uh, while it's on their watch, they're not going to allow this ship to go down. You alluded that in the intro. Now, just as we've been hearing from people here about how to fix this ship, also there's a lot of people here who are very concerned about it and have a lot of reaction to it. And I'm going to turn over to my colleague right now, Rob Hackford. And Rob, you even have some personal memories about this ship. Yeah, Ron, I remember coming down here as a Boy Scout, sleeping on the USS Little Rock, the neighbor to the USS The Sullivans. It's been used for weddings, other events in the area. It is a, a large part in this community. And there are plenty of memories that have surfaced with the sinking of the Sullivans and people have been coming down as all, all day, as Ron mentioned. A lot of veterans especially have been stopping by the Naval Park. Uh, we spoke to an Air Force veteran and one from the Marine Corps who were both shocked to hear about the state of this historic vessel. In a way, the ship itself is a veteran too, serving in World War II and the Korean War. That's a veteran. That's a veteran. <laughs> That's a big veteran. That's, that was a lot of names, just a namesake alone is... And when you say Sullivan, if you ever did time in the military, your ears perk up and you, un 
and the story behind it and all that. I certainly wasn't expecting this. I had heard the ship had partially rolled, but my God, we're lucky we still have her. She's worth saving. It's got a great history. Yeah, worth saving indeed. Buffalo police are trying to keep the area accessible as more people come down here. So if you do stop by, keep in mind that there may be a bit more traffic than usual. And as my colleague Ron Plants pointed out, with all the money that's been pumped into the USS, the Sullivans, you know, everyone is hoping that this can be a, a positive process and the ship will not go down. For Ron Plants, I'm Rob Hackford, the Buffalo Naval Park, Channel 2 News. Scott. Rob and Ron, thank you for your coverage today. We appreciate it. And if you'd like more of our coverage throughout the day, it is up right now on WGRZ.com. And Pete Gallivan's story of how the ship came to Western New York is coming up in the next half hour. That'll be on tonight's Town Hall.